Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we compared the forces on an object moving through a fluid. Uh, in that case, we had a very small sphere, and it moved at a very small rate, and we calculated the buoyancy force, the force caused by the viscosity of the liquid, and the drag force on the object as it moves through the liquid. It was a small object with a small radius moving at a small velocity, and there we determined that the viscosity was the dominating factor in the effect of the motion of a small sphere through a fluid. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a larger object, an object with a radius of 15 centimeters, mass of 113 kilograms, like the size of a basketball made out of metal, moving at 20 meters per second through a fluid. What will happen now? What will be the dominant force on that object? Well, of course, gravity will pull it down equal to the weight of the object, and then the three forces pushing against gravity will be the buoyancy force, it will be the force caused by the viscosity of the fluid, and it will be the drag, uh, the drag coefficient factor in the fluid as well. All right, so let's calculate those three quantities. The buoyancy force will be equal to the weight of the liquid displaced, so it would be the density of the liquid, the volume of the sphere, which would be 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed, the radius is 15 centimeters, so it's 0.15 cubed, and then of course g is 9.8. So that will give us the that will give us the buoyancy force on the object. So it'll be uh, 4,000 divided by 3 times pi times 0.15 quantity cubed, and then times 9.8, and that's more like it. 138 newtons. So 138 newtons is the buoyancy force. Now let's go find out what the force is due to the viscosity of the fluid. So that would be equal to, let's delineate that, so 6 pi times mu for water 20 degrees centigrade, that's 1.002, so very nearly 1. The radius would be 0.15 and the velocity we said was going to be 20 meters per second. So let's see what the forces are due to the viscosity of the fluid. So 6 times pi times 1.002 times 0.15 and times 20 and we get 56.7 or let's call it 57 newtons. So you can see that here the buoyancy force is even a larger factor than the forces due to the viscosity of the fluid. Well water is not a very viscous force but nevertheless you can see the difference. Now let's find out what the drag force is on that. So this would be equal to one half times since it's a sphere, the drag coefficient is 0 0.47. The density of the liquid is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The cross-sectional area, since it's a sphere, would be pi r squared. So it would be pi times the radius, which is 0.15 squared. And then the velocity would be 20 meters per second squared. So let's see how large the drag forces are on an object like that. So it would be 0 0.5 times 0.47 times 1,000 times pi times 0.15 squared and times 20 squared equals and that's 6644. Notice what a much larger force that is. So here we have a much larger object moving through a fluid at very high velocities, 20 meters per second is a very high velocity and notice how much bigger the drag forces are compared to the forces caused by the viscosity and the forces caused by the buoyancy force. So it's completely turned around. For very small spheres moving slowly, this became the dominant force. And for large objects moving quickly through the fluid, this becomes a dominant force. So in the first instance, with small objects moving through a fluid, the drag, the drag force was not even a factor and we could just even not calculate it and, comp and even use it in our equations and we'd still get the correct answers. But in this case, where we have large objects moving quickly, you need to take into account because it's the most dominant force. So when we talk about trying to figure out how submarines move through, through the ocean water, again, that's an object that's very large, has a very large cross-section. They try to move very quickly. They have to displace an enormous amount of water. So you can see that the drag forces would be very important in the shape of that object. You want to shape it in such a way that the drag coefficient is the absolute minimum possible. And I'm sure that they do that when they build submarines. So there's a really good example of which force to become important under what circumstances.